I'm just gonna let this guy pass me. So he's spreading some dirt. We always like to see this guy because he, he helps the roads stop being icy. Oh, did he throw dirt on my car? This morning as I was leaving my house, it was extremely cold. And I've wanted to talk to you for a while about one of the worst parts of uh, an electric car, one of the biggest disadvantages, and that is cold weather efficiency. Uh, but I haven't had a good chance, and I thought today was a good opportunity. So you can see up here, um, the car says it's 17 degrees, but that's because I was in my garage. That's been slowly dropping as I've been driving. Uh, my thermostat at home said that it was around one degree, but that sensor is being hit by the sun. Uh, so in the mornings, it's a little warmer than it actually is and my app on my phone said negative four Which is also what my thermostat had said earlier before the Sun came up and so it's uh, negative Fahrenheit here And it's the coldest day we've had yet this winter by far But I wanted to start out with a couple of the positives of this car in this extreme cold weather driving because it does have a couple of advantages one of those being the heater is instantly ready because it's a resistive heater. You don't need an engine in the front to warm up as it drives. The second you get in the car and you turn the heater on, it's on. That's it. Heat is coming out and it's warming you up. Another advantage is preheating the car. So you can preheat it from the app, which, you know, a lot of modern cars now have this. Uh, but the advantage in the Tesla is because there's no emissions. There's nothing coming out of the tailpipe that's poisonous to you. When it's in your garage, if you have a garage, I keep my car in a closed garage overnight, you can turn it on from the app without having to worry about your garage being closed, without having to open your garage. Uh, and you can actually also schedule, I'm just gonna let this guy pass me. Uh, you can actually just schedule all of this as well so that the car will automatically uh, heat up for you and be ready for you in the morning when you leave. So he's spreading some dirt. Uh, we always like to see this guy because he he helps the roads stop being icy. So that's awesome. Oh, did he throw dirt on my car? <laughs> that's so funny. I wonder if there's like dirt all over my car now. Um, well, we know there is. So the final advantage that I, this guy put dirt on my car. So the final advantage that I could really think of if you're in a cold climate and you know on the extremely cold days in your old gas car, uh, some mornings it was so cold that your car wouldn't even start if you parked outside. Now in a garage this isn't usually an issue, but uh, I used to park outside all the time before I had a garage and it would be, you know, a couple times a year where it would just be so cold out that my car would not start and I'd just have to be late to wherever I was. I'd have to wait a little bit for it to warm up outside so that my car would start. And even in colder areas like Alaska and Northern Canada, they have uh, block heaters. And you know, you can get that in Michigan too if you really want it. And these gas cars actually have to plug in. You'll see, uh, like in Alaska, I've seen they have like, bay I mean, I haven't been there, but I've seen pictures. They have bays uh, where all these plugs are coming off because when people park there, they can all plug in their, their cars while they're at work all day. And then when they go to leave, their engine is warm and they can start the car right up and uh, they don't have any problems. So you don't have that in a Tesla. There's no um, ignition, there's no spark, you know, to start uh, the explosions in your engine. And so the car is pretty much just always on. It doesn't really turn off unless you specifically turn it off. And so there's really no weather that is so cold that your Tesla or your electric car isn't gonna start. So that's what I've got as far as advantages. Um, so for disadvantages, the main one is just efficiency in general. So you can see this number down here, watt hours per mile. This is kind of like your mileage and the lower this number, the better. That means you're using less energy for every mile you go. And so in the summer for me, typically, um, I will see somewhere in the mid 200s, uh, mid to upper 200. So maybe around 270 watt hours per mile uh, when I'm driving on the highway around 78 or 75 miles per hour. And I'll see that pretty much all year in my car. Um, and of course, the faster you go, the less efficient. Um, but I'm trying to compare, of course, all the same drives. And you know, on the highway, on the way to work, I do very often. Now check out this chart. And you can see on here, uh, this is the efficiency at different temperatures. And I've been tracking this. This is via Teslafy. And I've been tracking this for almost a year now. And the green bars that you see 
are my miles driven in that temperature range. So of course I have many more miles driven at more normal temperatures between like 30-ish and 75-ish uh, Fahrenheit. I have a lot more miles in that range, but I do have a few miles at these more extreme temperatures and I'm of course adding to those miles here today. And you can see the pretty clear trend that as the temperature goes down, so does your efficiency. Now I personally will start to notice my watt hours per mile increase, so I will notice my efficiency go down. As soon as we get below like 70 Fahrenheit, it's pretty apparent that the efficiency of the car is going down. And this is for a few reasons. Not only does a cold battery in general become less efficient because it's harder uh, to move that energy around, but also the cold air is a little denser and so as you especially go faster you have more wind resistance in the cold and then the biggest biggest thing is the heater so i had this set at 68 which is not all that warm and people have commented you know we see you when you're in the car you are just like decked out you have all your clothes on you have a hat on and this is i don't know this is how i drove in my gas car too um but i do bundle up maybe a tiny bit more when i am in this car now because I know that I don't want to turn the heat up too much uh, because it uses so much more energy. You'll often hear that in the worst case scenario, your range will be cut in half in the winter. So if you have a 300 mile battery, you're only going 150 miles. And that can be true. And it is actually what I normally tell people when they ask about winter efficiency, because I don't want to lowball that estimate for them. I don't want someone to get in this car and I'm like, oh, you'll only lose, you know, 20%. Uh, and then they get in the car and it's this extreme type of weather and now they're losing, you know, 30, 40 or 50 percent. But most of the time um, you're not losing 50 percent. 50 percent is more when you're on the highway, you're going really fast, uh, closer to 80 miles per hour. It's about this cold. You can see now we've reduced to two degrees Fahrenheit uh, reading from the car. You have the heat cranked like up high, so you're maybe at 75 or something or 78, and you just have no care in the world you know, for your efficiency, that's when you're gonna see those really crazy extreme numbers. And so when you have cold weather, you know, your gas car does get less efficient. You do lose range in your gas car, um, but it doesn't matter as much for a few reasons because you're not losing as much range and you can just go fill up in two seconds, so like nobody cares. And also nobody talks about uh, gas cars in terms of range. They just talk about it in miles per gallon and, and nobody really thinks about it. But your gas car does get less efficient in the winter. That's a fact. So overall, what are the consequences of uh, this reduced efficiency in winter driving? Well, in daily life, depending on your commute, at least for me, it really doesn't matter at all. I end up using a little more energy, so I do spend more money on electricity in the winter. Of course, it's still way, way cheaper than gas. For me, it's about a third of the cost uh, that gas was. I get home every day and I plug in and I charge up to 80 or 90% and that's it. So when I go to work, you know, I get home with 50% or more. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, really matter all that much. Um, I just, like I said, spend a little more on electricity. I use a little more electricity on these colder days. Like this is a pretty high number, this 400 watt hours per mile. This is closer to like what a Model S or a Model X will use. And those are much bigger, heavier vehicles. As for road trips, um, I don't have all that much to say about it because simply I have not done a road trip in the winter. I really don't have much experience for you there. Um, but you can use a website like a better route planner and you can plan out the trip and you can tell it that it's, you know, zero degrees Celsius or whatever. And you can see how that's going to affect your trip. Uh, I found a better route planner is pretty accurate with those things, but it's basically going to amount to you stopping a little more and charging a little more. Um, but with the way the supercharger network is laid out, in 95% of the country, maybe more than that. Uh, it's still not something you really have to worry about where uh, you're gonna run out of charge and, and be stranded somewhere. As long as you're paying attention to what you're doing um, and you stop at those superchargers with a minimum of say, you know, plan to get there with 20%. Uh, and then if you go off route or something, you might get there with 10% and then you can plug in. So it'll amount to increased charging times um, and maybe overall your road trip will take a little longer. But uh, I don't think in a Tesla anyway, you'll ever be in a scenario where you're gonna worry about making it to a charger. It's just gonna add some time. So then the final thing that I wanna discuss about this just really quick uh, is things you can do if you care, if you own a Tesla or are really thinking about getting a Tesla, um, things you can do to increase your efficiency or at least minimize your efficiency loss. And number one, for sure, is drive a bit slower. Um, that will keep your energy use lower. Uh, you can see we're already dropping pretty good here because we've slowed down. 
Um, now I'm about to get on the highway and this number is going to be insanely high. Uh, but you know, that's just, that's, that's what it is. Uh, I don't mind that much because again, every morning I'll just be full again. Number two after speed is reducing, you know, your temperature here. Um, 68, uh, from what I see online of other Tesla drivers, and at least um, the ones that are really obsessed with their efficiency and want to get the most efficiency. 68 is actually on the higher end. A lot of people do less than this. I've seen people say that they turn it off. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and freeze my butt off. Like, I have the car to, you know, because I want to enjoy it and be comfortable. Um, so that's kind of crazy. Uh, I do know that if you completely turn it off, especially in the winter, you'll get a lot of fogging. One thing you can do if let's say you're in an emergency and you like need every bit of range, um, you can go all the way to low and that's pretty much off, but it's still blowing air for you. No, don't do that. Um, it's still blowing air for you. So then at least that was actually going to cool the car off. Um, so then at least you're not getting the fogging. Um, but in my opinion, like on a daily basis, again, there's no, there's no reason to do that. Um, you can just, if you have charging at home anyway, which if you're in a winter climate, I really hope you have charging at home. Um, you could just charge when you get home and, and you don't have to care too much about that. And you can see now that we've hopped on the highway, my efficiency has, uh, has uh, tanked. My, my energy usage has jumped up to 417 watt hours per mile. Okay, so that's about it for my tips and tricks and stuff. What I'm gonna do, I will check in with you at the end of this drive um, because it is warming up just a little bit as we get closer to the city. And I will let you know what my final stat is here. So I'll check in with you also at the end of the day. So that'll be this one right here since last charge. And we can see how many miles we actually drove uh, total for the day. And then up here, we'll compare to our starting mileage of 272 and see how many miles the car used versus what we actually did. All right, so here we are the first part of the day. Um, I actually realized the car didn't finish charging. Um, so I'm gonna have to assume it was at 270 when I left. Uh, it was somewhere around there. Um, and you can see we went 36 miles. We used about 60 miles. Um, so pretty close to using double the amount of miles. Um, but our efficiency is actually not that terribly bad. I'm normally more seeing in the 320s or 310s around this time. Um, so an extra 60 watt hours per mile. And one other thing I did forget to mention as well. Um, another reason you lose efficiency is you can see up here these dots mean my regen braking, which is where the car slows itself and recharges the battery using kinetic energy. Uh, that's really limited in the cold. Um, and so when you're driving at highway speeds, uh, this doesn't really factor in all that much because you don't really use regen on the highway, um, but it is a factor. All right, so I'm heading home. You can see everything is loud. Uh, I have the high heat on, but I forgot to turn it on before I left. I normally like to turn it on like 15 or 20 minutes before I leave and I totally forgot. So I have a little snowflake here, which means just a bit of my battery is uh, limited, but that'll go away in a minute. All right, so all done for the day. I'm back home. Sorry, I do not want to turn the heat off. I know you can hear it, but it's really cold out. Um, so you can see this past drive was 353 watt hours per mile. So not quite as bad. The temperature is a little more. We're at 17 degrees rather than uh, three or four that we were at this morning. Um, total, since we started driving, 367 watt hours per mile. So the past few weeks, I've been getting home with around 300 and same for the total since last charge, anywhere from 300 to 320 watt hours per mile. So a pretty significant increase that you're seeing here. You can see even after driving over 35 miles, uh, about half my regen is still missing and we are down to 143 miles. So we actually drove 72 miles and we used right around 130 miles. And so that is almost exactly half of the range that we would expect. And that's due to a few things, of course, the terrible efficiency from the cold weather, but also preheating. Um, I didn't preheat the car for as long as I normally would before I left, um, but I did preheat it for about five minutes or so on the highest setting, blasting the heat. And that uses energy that is not calculated in here. So overall, you do lose a lot of efficiency in the winter, but still the Tesla is gonna be more efficient than pretty much any gas car you're gonna be driving. And on a daily basis, it really doesn't matter all that much because you'll just leave the house with a full charge anyway. And this is another reason I'm always saying you should have charging at home. Of course, if you don't have cold weather or winter, it doesn't really apply to you. Um, but if you have any type of cold weather, I would 100% want charging uh, where I live or work. I guess if you have it at work, that's okay too. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will get back to you down in the comments. If you're not subscribed yet, get subscribed and you will see me in the next video.